Target bouncing along the ground. Smith couldn't contain it. Opportunity lost again. Gurry, his wobbly kick comes out to halfback. Quayle eventually picks it up. Hill, not a good bounce. In towards the centre of the ground. Dean, very good for a big player. Stevie Wright thought there was a player there in support, but he backs it up. Handballs over. Noonan, quick hands out of the pack. Intercepting was Humphrey. Comes around on his right foot, in towards half forward, over the top of Edwards. Running back is Stephen Fry. He can do it very, very casually. Just tips the ball around the uh, towards the boundary line. Had no intention of keeping it in play. And uh, I suppose you can't blame him for that at this point of the game. So it's going to be a boundary throw in. There's McCartan in front. Hill, one of his few possessions up towards the forward line. And there it is, Clarence, back to back. And Bob Gozzi, Ray Groom and Lyndon Adams, the on the list there, applauding the Roos and their fans can celebrate back-to-back -back premierships. They're going berserk on the oval. Sean Williams smiles all round and Clarence, 13-13-91, have defeated a very gallant New Norfolk team, 8-5-53. But in the end, Clarence had all the out the answers and outgunned and probably outmuscled New Norfolk. Unbelievable scenes here on the Oval as thousands of fans have poured on to North Hobart to congratulate their heroes. And the heroes today, Clarence. Stevie right there just sitting apart from it all. We could have could grab a quick word with him at the fans jubilant they had to wait a while the last flag before 93 was way back in 84 of course they won their first premiership in 1970 and scott way being cheered up there by his teammates he hinted that it might be his last game today oh, i wonder and that's nice paul Dack going over to his new norfolk ex-teammates there but he'll be celebrating tonight after crossing from eagle land to Ruland. Thousands of people on the Oval. Darren Winter and Holmes sharing the bubbly. And off camera, Robbie with Stevie Wright saying a few words to the Clarence, uh, sorry, the New Norfolk players. Darren Denneman's collecting his players, and Stevie Wright's in the middle of them uh, giving some words of commiseration. And what a magnificent gesture that is. You can't quite see him amongst all of that, but he's in there somewhere. And I think he might have finished now and moved on, and Denneman has the players to himself. Well, they can be very proud of their efforts, can't they, this year? I mean, they didn't make the finals last year. They finished just out of it when beaten by Hobart in that last game, which we covered. And this year, with a bit of recruiting, they brought in McCart, brought across Hill from North Hobart, and punted on youth, and hasn't it been successful? One of the, the most important things they'll take out of today's game, New Norfolk, Rob, is the fact that they've actually been here. The experience of playing in a grand final is invaluable. And teams that have lost it over the years, playing with the AFL, have usually bounced back pretty convincingly the year after. Not so much necessarily in the statewide league, although Hobart lost in 89 to North Hobart and then came out in 1990 and won it. And the important thing about the New Norfolk side is that it is a very, very young combination. Let's now go down to the boundary line where Chris Smythe, who's been covering Clarence all day, he's got the 1994 victorious captain coach, Clarence's Stevie Wright. Stevie, congratulations. Great victory. You must be very proud of your side. I'm very proud. You know, we, we set ourselves a goal. You know, to win back-to-back -back premierships is very, very hard to do. And I'm just so pleased and so proud of my guys. You know, not only my guys, but you know, Grant Fagan, Lee College, uh, the committee, you know, the... Uh, the girls, you know, Kerry had all the girls together. I'm just very happy for the whole club. The conditions were very difficult out there at times. What specific instructions did you give your players during the, the sort of rainy periods and the wet periods and the windy periods? I just asked them for a, a supreme effort. I asked them to put their bodies on the line, and they did that all day. Look, there were some terrific uh, individual efforts here. You had Holm, you had Cullen, you had Danny Noon, and the grand old man himself, Scotty Wade. You must have been very pleased with his effort. Well, you know, Scotty is fantastic. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going to do next year, but I believe he can play again. But, what a fantastic guy. Look, you were red-hot favourites coming into the game. Were you all worried about your Norfolk? In a two-horse race, you always have to worry about the opposition. I'm just glad that uh, we had that week off, and I believe our, our young, fresh legs really won it for us. We got back-to-back. -back. Is this the sweetest victory of them all? No doubt. Congratulations, Stevie, and thanks for your help during the year. Thank you.
Great moment there for Stephen Wright. What an impact he's had on the Clarence Football Club. They've always had a lot of talent on the Eastern Shore, but they really haven't been able to capitalise. They had a few chances to win premierships, but couldn't do it. And Stevie Wright's come in. He's a very unassuming type of character. I think he's underrated as the mentor of the football club. The coach in this level of competition has such a role to play. The coach and then the premiership, the two most important people around. And Stevie Wright has an absolute perfect record. And what a fantastic moment that is. The two veteran Rovers, Steve Wright and Scott Wade, congratulating each other and sharing what is a magnificent moment. And Scott Wade, well, it might be the end of a magnificent career for him. Of course, he's won two William Leach medals, played in premierships three now, represented his state, captain of the state, Phil Atwell, the secretary of the Clarence Football Club, and Steve Wright. And it'll just be interesting to see whether Scotty Wade will retire. You're a Hawthorne man. Bob, we'll come back to you with your thoughts on Scott Wade's future. Let's now go down to the boundary line where Chris Smythe is speaking with Scotty Wade. Scotty, we spoke before the match. You were 34 years old. You thought you wanted another year in you. Terrific after today. You must be very pleased with your form. Fantastic. I mean, what more can you ask for? We, we really worked hard to, to win back-to-back -back all year, and we've had some disappointments. We haven't had a great year, really. Um, but, oh, this is fantastic. Look, I was really impressed with the one percenters today. Your smothers, your tackles, your shepherds, the numbers of the ball. Did you deliberately focus on that? Uh, well, we called the final series Operation Tackle. It's something that... Uh, we got from uh, Hawthorne when they won back to back and uh, we worked hard. We had 68 tackles in the second semi-final. I'm not sure how many you had today, but you know, that's the name of the game. Just tackle, tackle, tackle. But last year was a tribute win. How do you rate this year? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, uh, to win back to back, uh, the club has never done it before and they failed in 85 and we just wanted to do it and be the first and be the best and it's worked out wonderfully well. Well, could you announce the fact that you're going on for one more year on ABC Live TV? No, I'll announce the fact that I've retired. Uh, Scott, you've been an absolute tremendous order for the game. Congratulations and thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you heard it first. Scott Wade has retired. Has he retired before, Gary? Sorry, Rob. Has he retired before? Not to my knowledge. I, I know he was uh, wanting to go to a club where he could play in uh, finals winning teams. And he's certainly been able to do that. They went through that patch 89, 90, where, 90, 91, where they really just couldn't get it together to go on and win finals matches. But to win two on, two on the trot, terrific effort. And, uh, and I guess really what better way to, to culminate your career by being a member and a very good playing member of the, of the premiership side and particularly back-to-back uh, -back premierships. Now, there's a change of tradition today, fellas, with the way the Darrell Bulldog medal will be presented and also the way the players will be presented with their premiership medallions. We've got a, the TFL is going back to putting it in the Horry Goring stand. It's something that works very effectively in overseas sports such as uh, Wembley Soccer and the FA Cup as we see New Norfolk players despondently going off the field. And it's very difficult for them as their change rooms are up the other end of the ground of the Hurry Goring stand in. They're going off. They won't be seeing the presentations. I'm a bit sort of uh, each way about whether a side should stay out in the ground to, uh, to watch the other side. But anyway... Well, Rob, if you're talking about overseas events and presentation of medals in the overseas events, they actually present the uh, defeated side with their medallions as well. And maybe that's something the league could look at for next year. Well, perhaps uh, Australian rules organisations have been a bit wary about that, Bob, ever since Peter Law threw his and kicked his into the grandstand after uh, Collingwood were absolutely thumped by Richmond. Or it might have been the year they got beaten closely by, by, uh, by Carlton. Bob Gossie and Ray Groom there, and you see what's happening here. The players will be presented with their, their medallions in the Hurry Goring stand. Richie, a good game today. 13, no, 24 Scott possessions. Wade. Dak, then Hurd. Danny Nuna. Darren Winter, last year's Darrell Baldock Paul medalist. Holdsworth. Gave a few free kicks away today, but was still very, very good. Holdsworth did a very good job on, uh, on Denneman today. Didn't feature all that much. 15 possessions, but uh, did, did it pretty well. Dean. We've seen Cullen today. 18 possessions for Cullen. Again, very good in a big game. Daniel Holm. Dean, fantastic. We missed him. Absolutely tremendous. Daniel Holm has uh, been a, a, an inspiration for them this year. David Might be Donato. off to the AFL. Holdsworth there. Two premierships in a row. Scott McCullum. Nicholas Davy. There's John Cullen. Stephen Coming Fry. up on screen. Blair Brownless. 
Adrian Dean just getting his congratulations Jones, from the Premier now. Sean Williams. See the ground announcer is absolutely Cooney, flying through Mark these names. Richards, Danny Holm, David Donato. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's our great Scott pleasure McCallum, to call upon Captain Coach Steve Rice. Nick Davey, won't he appreciate being part of a Premiership year? Young player, Stephen Fry, the victorious team Laird for Brownless 1994. There. Matthew Jones. And well done job for Clarence. And Rick Patterson in the background the there of 7 ZR. Grant Fagan. Williams receiving his medal. Gab Cooney, quiet game today. Mark Richards, number 44. Out, Must say this is an improvement on previous Mark. years. Right, Last yeah, year we had the and, uh, had Stevie Wright there, addressing the crowd the on the ground and with the crowd around him. But this way they've got some sort of natural Paris. stage there. And let's listen now to Stevie Wright. Here's Steve Wright. Uh, I'd just like to firstly say thanks to our guys who took the field today. Also thanks to those guys who, who just missed out. Uh, I believe that what we've got at, at Clarence is something special. That's just not the senior team, that's the whole club. I'd also like to thank my coaching staff, Grant Fagan. Our, our reserves. Our reserves coach, Lee College. Also our under-19 coach, Darren Winter, and our under-17 coach, Andrew Jones. I'd also like to thank our runner, Johnny Shepherd. Well done, Johnny. I'd also like to thank the committee, now Doug Davey, and his committee. I believe that they are the best committee here in the TFL. I believe they, they should have a round of applause. Thanks very much. Stevie right there and the players, and I think right. this is a great initiative by the I mean, TFL to present these awards. Should go to my wife and kids. Now, Kerry's been fantastic with all the girls. I'd just like to thank her very much and say I love you. Thanks very much. A lovely moment there for Steve Wright and family. And Kerry yes, Wright, thanks yes, very much to Stevie Wright. Because Ladies she's really rallied the Clarence wives and girlfriends around their team. The Darryl Baldock medal, which is for the player who has been judged by the panel to be the best player in the grand final. That player is from New Norfolk, Jason Wilton. Well, I wonder where Jason Wilton is because the New Norfolk players are off the ground. They've gone underneath the Doug Place to stand in. And uh, now, unless they get a chopper, Jason won't Lyndon be back. Adams, General Manager of Tasmanian Breweries, to present the trophy to Stevie Wright. And what a special moment this is, the ultimate in TFL footy. Winners of the 1994 TFL Premiership, Clarence. Grant Fagan, the assistant coach, right of screen. There are the players. And the presentations today in the Hurry Goring stand. And now let's pop the cork on this uh, big bottle of champagne and uh, let the uh, team have a sip or two as they just prepare for, I think, perhaps the best part of the afternoon, and that is the victory lap. There's a bit of trouble here in the popping department. Don't waste any, gentlemen. Shake it up, guys. The 500cc motorcycle bikers do this best. I think they're the world champs of this. There's a few young boys in the There's crowd one. there waiting for the champagne to come down. Grant Fagan had okay, all sorts of problems here. Never been under more pressure as Grant go. Fagan. Can he do it? Oh, he's broken you... the cork. Oh, no, they need a corkscrew. He's broken <laughs> the cork. Bit of a fizzer. 500 bucks worth of champagne down the drain. Looks like we've got no a broken, broken. Anybody got a corkscrew? <laughs> Do you tell what? I'll give him a hand. <laughs> we've no, we got the corkscrew. <laughs> well, this is the only part that uh, hasn't gone quite right for Clarence today. I tell you Everything what, your French champagne houses would be looking on this with absolute horror. 
I think it's one of the highlights of the day. There we go. There it goes. And now he's right. The players have copped it here. Grant Blake getting his own back there. And Sean Williams knows all about it. They'll be pretty happy to get their hands on that. They've worked very hard. It hasn't been as, as a spectacular year as 1993. Now here comes They've done Alex it the hard way. They've been knocked over by a couple of uh, ordinary sides. But they're certainly the last side out there, and they deserve to be there. Here go the players now, just coming down for a lap of honour here at the North Hobart Oval. The players are going to make their way down onto the ground for well, a lap of honour. it's absolute chaos up there. The players are just about to head off on their lap of honour. What a tremendous moment this will be for them. And there's still plenty of people on the ground. And the lap of honour, Gary and Bob, you've played at Premiership sides. Uh, it, is it the moment? Well, it would be a moment for Steve Wright because he can barely get down the stairs on this particular <laughs> instance. They'll have to carry him around. And, and, and I guess that's something the players really feel. It doesn't matter how sore and tired you are, you will manage to get around and you want to be having onto the cup and holding it up to your fans as you go around, Bob, won't you? Really? I can only recall the one thing I wanted to do, apart from being with the teammates, was, was to try and find your, your family in the crowd. And at the MCG, in front of 120,000 people, that's pretty hard. But, <laughs> but these, these players will savour this moment for many, many years. As will this lady, publicly thanked by the captain coach. She's had a big part this year. There's Kerry Wright, here with Smith, uh, Chris Mide. Kerry, uh, CB Wright was very excited. How excited oh, are you? Oh, it's just great. I just can't believe it. Two in a row. It's just fantastic. I just can't believe it. How are the kids watching today? How are they? Oh, as bad as me. We're all so nervous. Oh, it was just great. I just can't explain it. <laughs> Were you ever worried at any stage that North might get up and win? Um, a little bit early, but not last quarter I thought we probably had it, so that was really good. They played so well. What about our back line? I can't believe it. They're so good. Steve, so Steve, good. Stevie writes himself a pretty old man, as you probably already know. He played pretty well today, though. Oh, well, he knows if he plays well, the team usually plays well, and he did, and that's all we can ask. He still plays well! Are you looking forward to celebrating tonight, Kerry? Oh, it'd be terrible. <laughs> we'll be celebrating for a week. Thanks for your time, Kerry. I'm on. I'm on. There aren't many guarantees in life, but there are that. Clarence will be celebrating for a week or more. And I know the wives and girlfriends of Clarence Gary started today with a champagne breakfast at a lavish hotel in Hobart. So uh, they'll do pretty well to last the night out, I'd imagine. They'll be finishing with a champagne supper, I should imagine, Rob, that uh, I'm probably drinking it out of the Premiership Cup. Well, Gab Cooney's got a huge clasp on that at the moment. Scotty Wade's being handed it now, the veteran who's announced his retirement live on ABC TV. And what a moment to go out on. Danny Noonan, probably more practically, has grabbed hold of the champagne. And there must be uh, two or three hundred kids going with them. An absolutely fabulous moment, this for Blair Brownless. Now, his brother Billy kicked the winning goal for Geelong a couple of weeks ago. Let's now check out the final score in the AFL preliminary final today. West Coast due to play Melbourne this evening. And the Cats have got up by a goal, so Geelong get another chance to win a grand final. And I understand, without knowing the details, that they won it on the last kick of the game again. The AFL must be jumping for joy that the final eight has worked so well with so many close contests. I'm sure North Melbourne does. <laughs> No, the North Melbourne side wouldn't be jumping for joy at all. Paul Jubb, a mate of mine, will be going absolutely berserk. He's a big Geelong supporter. Don't get too excited yet, Jubby. They've had two goes at it. Back here, though. Just looking at the lap of honour, Rob, she's slowed down to a walk. The boys have, uh, have had enough. They've, they've got to the wet area, and I guess that they, uh, they'll they take it fairly easily around this Ride Street side. And that big uh, magnum, it's not a magnum of champagne, it's almost like a a barrel of champagne it'd be so hard to lift that adrian dean not a lot of meat on his arms and uh, he's struggling to lift it up to his mouth to have a sip well last year was a historic moment for them in the sense that they broke some sort of drought there's uh williams and white and uh right hug there hull winter and mccallum they're very very good friends darren winter engaged uh, his fiance expecting their first child in a couple of months and he seems to be full of beans as he gets the Premiership Cup. Remember when Collingwood won the flag in 1990? Their lap took about three weeks to get around the Oval. It was extraordinary. And this is something similar. And it's like the Robin Hood's Army or the Pied Piper out there. There is a group of about 400 kids following them around. And won't they have a good time tonight? 
You must feel sorry though for New Norfolk. They've really risen up the ladder. Gained a lot of credibility as a football team and club. What a year for the club. The under-19s won the flag today for New Norfolk. Their reserves finished third and their seniors pipped at the last hurdle. But all honours with this mob today and Darren Winter, who hasn't had the greatest of seasons, but rubbed out twice. He copped four weeks earlier in the year for an incident with Hall and then copped another four weeks, which uh, put his finals campaign in jeopardy. But the club rushed him straight back in, such as their regard for his talents. Well, it's been a big year for us all here in TFL football. And uh, our coverage for the 1994 season is just about to conclude with our national commitments at five o'clock. So, Gary, I'd personally like to thank you for your uh, undying efforts again. Thanks very much for joining us. Undying efforts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I find it very difficult giving you a public rap, believe me, but I've got to. Yeah, thanks, Rob. <laughs> really enjoyed the year. No, thanks very much. You've... Uh, Again, been a model of professionalism. Bob Kenny joined us again this year, and, and thanks very much for your input, Bob. It's been tremendous. Thanks very much, Rob. It's uh, been a pleasure to work with the experts. <laughs> uh, down on the boundary line, we've had Chris Mai with us for most of the year. John Kenny chipped in today. Tremendous for them as well. And uh, Bob, and I'd like, just like to publicly thank our very hard-working producer, Rob Klein, his assistant, Brigitte Lowe, and uh, executive producer, Richard Rees. Goodbye to you all. Clarence, the champs of 94. We'll be back next year. See you then. Run that bit faster. Take all the heat of the game. The game of football. Now let's hear it for the man. For the man who stood tall. Grand old man. Jasmanian football. For those who join in his company, the holders of the covenant, William Leach, best in the